It's been a long time since this game came out. To be precise, it's been a year. I've had many feelings about it, many highs, many lows, many plateaus. But overall, how do I feel about it? To answer that, I'm going to talk about balance, as I feel as if that is the most important aspect of RTS. Here is a list of units that were, at some point in time, broken. Sentinels, Marines, Flame Hogs, Jackrabbits, Warthogs, Marauders, Grizzlies, Locusts, Jump Pack Brutes, Choppers, Multiple Heroes, Kodiaks. You get the point. And remember that these are just units, not leader powers. If I got started on leader powers, this video would last far too long. The best this game ever was in terms of balance was the week before Awakening the Nightmare came out. It wasn't perfect as Tech 2 vehicles were slightly overpowered, but there was no Vortis and there was no Pavium. Those two leaders quite literally might detract a point from my rating of this game. Then again, I suppose that I'm fairly biased seeing as I had a 4 hour and 40 minute game against Pavium in which I had 5 bases and he had 1. You would think I could have won easily, but Pavium's turtle, even on one base, was unbreakable. Things like this is what makes players shelf the game, and sadly there were many things like that. On February 6th of 2017, I made a post on Halo Waypoint titled My Hopes and Dreams, outlining what would make Halo Wars 2 successful. These were my three main points. 1. The game had to be competitive, and it needed to sustain that competition. 2. It had to be inclusive, drawing in new players and keeping them around with alternative game modes. So far, so good, right? Well, here's 3. The game had to be balanced. This is where Creative Assembly and 343 failed. My original post on the topic read like this. Lastly, I want balance. Some of the decisions CA made was to take an axe to the previous dynamic between the UNSC and Covenant. If you're scratching your head, think about how different the factions were. One had a higher population cap, the other had stronger units. One had an on-field leader, and the other had economic bonuses. With Halo Wars 2, that is not so. While I do more on that fact, I believe it was a decision that was made in order to make balance an easier thing to achieve. All I have to say to CA is this, listen to the player base. While I tend to disagree with many people on these forums, I don't think that there is anything to lose in lending an ear to players. I'm of course not saying do everything that players suggest. If their post reads like, I want the flood because they're cool, then it should be disregarded by all means. But if there is a group of players that have a good grasp on the game, and they're pushing for something to either be removed or implemented, then CA should listen. Balance is not something Halo Wars 2 can afford to mess up. By and large, I still stand by that statement. If CA listened to the community more, I'm rather certain that the notorious 300% anvil round buff wouldn't have happened. The point I was making was that CA needed to listen to the high-level community as they are the ones that would find out what was too good, what wasn't good enough, and what needed to be added simply for quality of life. Unfortunately, this isn't exactly the approach they took. Here's a quote from the thread from The Rudy, which I completely agreed with at the time and still do now. I imagine the first few months will be a little rough with unit imbalances, new exploits, and glitches, but really what RTS doesn't have these issues at launch? So long as the issues that inevitably arise are dealt with in a timely and efficient manner, Halo Wars 2 should be a success. As you can see, our expectations were not met. Sure, at first they had the excuse of the game being young. Of course it's going to take some time to sort out all of the issues. But when the game has been out for as long as it has been and it's still in such a state, there are really no excuses left to be made. Not all of Halo Wars 2's shortcomings have been its fault, though. In my mind, the original Halo Wars had a much more robust community. If anyone remembers Basista, also known as Espro Mitch, they'll know what I'm talking about. So much of a game's appeal is centered around a strong community, and the only YouTube channel I think comes close to being the Basista of Halo Wars 2 would be Breaking the Clutch. 
However, while BTC valiantly created quality content, it eventually fell off and no one was there to fill the void that was left behind. This isn't CA's fault, nor is it 343's fault. It's ours. I wish I had the editing skills, the creativity, and the motivation to post more than just VODs of streams, but I don't. I'm sure that the same applies to many others. But still, I think we all bear at least a little bit of the responsibility for Halo Wars 2's failure. It's not something I relish saying, but this game did not live up to its predecessor. What hurts the most is that it almost did. This is a bit of a controversial opinion, but the point stands nonetheless. Now, I have to do something very difficult for me. On a scale from 1 to 10, what would I give it? I've bounced around giving it a 6 and a 7 throughout the months, but I think the most fair rating I can give it is a 6.5. A bit above average, but ultimately held back by incompetent sloth and an apathetic community. Still, I'd like to end this review on a positive note. To wrap things up, I'm going back to the post I made before the launch of the game, specifically the end of it. With all that said, I want to extend my thanks to CA and 343 for making this happen. Even if there is some extraordinary disaster and the game manages to flop somehow, I still want to thank everyone who made the effort to make the literal game of my dreams come to life. Supply patch installed. All units.